Welcome to the Pasha Perspective, a place where I share my perspective on everything in the space between life and death. I'm your host, Pasha. Well, my Pachos Chachos, I have two questions for you this week. Two uh, inspired from the Daily Wire. One of them is by Andrew Clavin, and the other one is inspired by Michael Knowles. So let's begin with the first one. So Andrew Clavin, in his uh, latest podcast on the Daily Wire, which you can also check out on YouTube, I don't get paid for him, but I love the guy and I'll throw him some love. Um, He has this great segment where he's talking about the homeless person who was unfortunately killed uh, while he was being restrained by a Marine. And, you know, of course, you have the whole racial issue, which they're absolutely blowing out of proportion. You know, of course, the liberal media will never tell you that there were like he had 42 prior counts. He had a warrant out for his arrest for punching an elderly 67-year-old woman, uh, just cold clocked her. And, um, you know, and so it's really unfortunate that he died. And, you know, I think it's kind of obvious that they didn't try to kill him. You know, you don't put a dead person in a recovery position afterwards if you think he is only unconscious, you know, you put him to his side in case he vomits, you'd want him to choke on it. And, uh, you know, you wait for help to arrive. And, you know, unfortunately, they're going to ruin this man's life now and paint him as a racist, even though he, you know, trains and, you know, makes our soldiers the what they are. But, you know, and he's been awarded, he's uh, you know, honorably still in it and everything in active duty. And it's like, they don't, they don't want anybody to stand up for themselves, you know? And, and, and it's bad enough that the city has embraced these crazy policies of defund the police. And because, you know, they don't want to have too many people of a certain ethnicity being in jail. And so it just makes sense, right? To have a revolving door in your in your booking system where you fingerprint them and then you just release them back into the public, which I think is absolutely insane. But, you know, you have those policies going on. Uh, You don't have enough police officers because you have to put your resources really in emergencies. And I'm sorry, but some, you know, crazed out guy in the subway threatening everybody saying he's ready to die and that he's going to kill people. That's, you know, that's a hard sell. You know, I mean, you can tell me he looked like Michael Jackson and danced like him or whatever when he was like, I don't know, 20 or something. But that was not the person I saw in the video. That guy was sick and he needed help. And unfortunately, because of those ridiculous liberal policies that they have in that city, he was released. He wasn't made to stay in rehabilitation or anything like that. And just again, attacked more. I mean, 42 counts, that's a lot of mischief making, let's just put it nicely. And so I wonder, and this brings me back to Andrew Clavin's question, are we a society that will help each other like we once did? You know, I mean, that was our American response to the attack on September 11th, 2001, as we drew together. We dropped the pettiness of race and gender and religion. And instead of looking at the left side of the hyphen, we started to find that commonality on the right side, the American side. Like I'm Mexican, Ecuadorian on the left and on the right, American. And because of that right side, I share that with 320 something million people who share that title with me. And we love this country. We love this land. We love our freedom. We love the government that ensures it, at least the one that used to follow the Constitution. But we can bring that back again if we all voiced our opinions and our our votes spoke for ourselves too. We could find people who we can hold responsible to 
spread the values and morals that we want. You know, we used to be a very moral people. We weren't always like this. With homelessness and drug addictions on the sidewalks next to stores and people's entrances to their apartment buildings. I can't imagine the terror that they have to feel on a daily basis and to suffer that. Why? Do you think that's humane to allow those people to wither away on the side of the street? I think that's more cruel to have such indifference. And then to exploit one of their deaths simply because the race in the victim you know, perpetrator fits your wonderful narrative of white supremacy is the greatest threat in America. That's garbage. You mean the liberal media is? You mean the Biden administration is? Now we're finding out the FBI is. Those are the enemies of the people. If they would just tell us the truth, if they would just go back to actually protecting us and our way of life and our country and put America first, Americans first, veterans first, before you put criminal border jumpers into hotels, before you kick out Americans who had a wedding set up and 30 rooms reserved for their family, and you boot them out for criminal border jumpers. That's terrible. So do we want to be a society like that? that turns our back instead? Or do we want to be that society that looked out for each other? Like after the floods in Houston, I remember seeing a man of color from Mississippi went all the way to Texas hauling his fisherman boat and he was helping save people who could not leave their homes because of the flooding and there wasn't enough emergency help in the area to help them. And there's a picture with the waters like up to his hips. Hopefully I'll find it. And if I do, I'll put a link to it at the bottom. And he's holding this elderly white woman in his arms. And in both their faces, you could see they did not care what color the other person was. He was beaming because he was helping somebody and he's a good person. And she was beaming because a good person was helping her. And that gave her hope, renewed hope in humanity, I'm sure. We can go there again. We can do that again. And hopefully without a terrorist attack. You know, if we could all just wake up and realize the game is to divide us. Those people I mentioned, the FBI, even the CDC, the WHO, the IRS, the Biden administration. They're all trying to make us forget how awful a job they're doing by throwing gasoline on a fire that they started. You didn't pick a fight with your neighbor, and your neighbor didn't pick a fight with you. You live peacefully and harmoniously, and yet they try to sell you this idea that you're supposed to hate each other. And that's not the way things worked. You can have all kinds of people on both parties and they can differ in many ways. I do not agree with everything anyone on the Daily Wire says. I agree, disagree a lot with Matt Walsh. I disagree less with Michael Knowles, even lesser extent with Ben Shapiro And Candace Owens, well, I mean, she's my girl. I love her all the time. And honestly, I haven't met an opinion yet that I don't like about her. So, but I'm sure, you know, I mean, we're different people. We have different experiences, different lives. Of course, we're going to have different ideologies and reasons for that ideology. And that's why communication and why uh, trust and truth are so important. If we're not speaking the truth, I can't trust you because I know you're lying to me and vice versa. We have to embrace the truth. We have to be and speak and communicate and plan in reality so that we can come up with something that's beneficial for both. Where, like Shapiro has said uh, in a recent podcast, we're both not going to be happy (laughs) 
because we're going to have to sacrifice something that we don't like, but we'll gain at least something where both of us win. We need to come back to the table. We need to stop looking at each other as if we are the enemy. There is no good. There is no bad. Like um, Jonathan Haidt says, although no, he didn't say it, but he quoted it from an ancient philosopher, which is not coming to me. So I'm just going to move on. But the heart or the, uh, the root of good and evil or the line between good and evil runs through all of us the heart of all of us. Every day, we can decide to be ruthless or we can decide to be merciful. Every day, we can decide, I'm going to commit a crime and steal something or I'm going to sacrifice my desire and do the right thing and leave it alone. Every day, we have to decide, am I going to be a good spouse or am I going to be somebody who thinks about himself and his desires only? And whatever you embrace more will be the dominant factor in your life. You embrace more good ideas and you sacrifice yourself a little more, that'd be better. Which leads me to my second question. And this one, I was inspired by Michael Knowles and I can't really remember the whole setup of it. So I'm just going to kind of leave that out. But the question is, are we going to be a people who sacrifices ourselves over our lives so that we can make room for our huge egos? Or are we going to be a people who sacrifices their egos for their children's lives? Are we going to, and I'm going to quote a raisin in the sun here because I'm teaching it recently in my classroom. It's a great story. It's a great play. If you've never read it, you should check it out. Um, but the, uh, the question is, are we going to be a people who gives life to babies? Or are we going to be a people who takes life from babies? Are we more important than our family and our future? And if you really understand life, our purpose and meaning? Or are we going to be such selfish, narcissistic psychopaths, as Jordan Peterson would put it, And even butcher our own children so we can smoke another joint, drink one more shot with the friends, and hang out late night feeling lonely and insecure and regretful of decisions we've made. I don't know. I'd like to be a kind of people that gives life to babies that lets them get born, and then we raise them right. And if anybody tries to twerk in front of them in a dress, we lock that person up or we put them in a mental institution. We don't parade them, and we certainly don't pay them after they do it. Are we going to allow pedophiles to prey on our children? Are we going to sexualize them? Is that all we're going to teach them their worth? Is their value is in what genitalia they possess, what artificial genitalia they purchase, the kind of amount of clicks they get. They're going to be valued on how many perverts are watching their pictures and videos. I don't think I care for that kind of society. And if I know anything about you, if you're still listening to me, I don't think you like that either. So let's do something about it. I know everything in the law, it seems, to go against anybody who stands up for their fellow man, but I am going to continue to encourage you to do just that. Let's look out for each other and be colorblind about it. Don't pull out a camera. Pull that person off of the victim and try to de-escalate if you can. And if you can't, then... Whoever else is in the room, snap to attention and start fighting against evil. So I'm going to remind you of a quote that it either comes from Mahatmas or it comes from Martin Luther Jr., but 
Martin Luther King Jr. But it says, um, all evil needs to exist in the world is for good people to do nothing. Let's stop doing nothing. Let's start offering a hand, showing God's love to our neighbors so that he will love us when we arrive at his gate. Well, my Pachos Chachos, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and giving me an ear. As always, I appreciate you and love you more than you will ever know. But I hope you will visit me again next week when we talk about the most recent topics in the news. Those, at least, I find are worthy of speaking about. And um, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you would like to hear my opinion on. I mean, I would love to, you know, give you what you want. <laughs> so anyway, have a great week. God bless. I'll talk to you later.